Hey guys, this week we're going to be talking about the basic tools that you're going to need in your toolbox. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of BS with AJ. This week we're going to be talking about the basic tools you're going to need for your toolbox to be doing work around the house, like plumbing or electrical work, some carpentry work, and things of that nature. Uh, I will be linking all these tools in the description down below uh, so you can scroll down there and find the tools that you either don't have or that you just want to buy a new set of or whatever. There's always a link there beside them, and I do that in all my videos. All the tools you're going to be using for each project I always put there. Now these are just your really basic tools, so you can spend a whole lot of money on specialty tools for each individual project, but these are just your basic tools to get you started. Now if you have any tools that you use a whole lot of, definitely leave that down in the comments below to let other people know what tools you use a lot. These are just the tools that I use for pretty much everything, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's get started by talking about the general tools you're going to need for pretty much any project you get started in. Now you can buy these in sets that are similar to this, or you can buy them individually like I have. I uh, definitely suggest having a socket set, whether you, if you're going to be working on mechanical stuff like your cars or appliances around the house or whatever. Uh, you're definitely going to need a, a standard set and a metric set because you never know which one you're going to be needing for which project you're working on. A, uh, another vital part to this uh, tool set here is your screwdriver set because you're going to need those in literally everything you get started in. Uh, I've got three different pair of uh, pliers here. You have your standard pliers, your channel lock pliers, and your needle nose pliers. And each of them serve a very good purpose in certain situations. And I suggest having all three of them because you don't know which one you're going to be needing. Uh, I definitely suggest you have at least one pair of vice grips. They can help you to hold things in place or they can help you get a better grip on things if you're having a hard time gripping onto it. A uh, tape measure is very vital whether you're doing carpentry work or just putting in electrical boxes or anything like that. You're going to need one of them so I definitely suggest that also. An adjustable wrench can also replace a wrench set if you don't want to carry a whole bunch of them around or if you just don't want to put the money into buying a good wrench set. An adjustable wrench would be a great part to your tool set as well. And last but not least, a claw hammer is really handy especially if you're doing carpentry work, but also even if you're just hanging a picture, you're going to need a hammer. So, let's, uh, I definitely suggest buying every one of these tools to get started for any project. All right, these are some other general tools that I definitely suggest that you purchase because they come in handy quite often, especially if you're under the house or up in the attic. At least one 50-foot drop cord. Uh, it depends on how far under the house you're working or how far away your nearest electrical outlet is. You may need more than one of these. Uh, drop light is really important, especially under the house or up in the attic, because there's little to no light up there normally. So that'll help put a lot of light in the general area you're working, but I definitely suggest purchasing a headlamp because that straps right onto your head and you can, you know, focus the light exactly where you need it to be. Now the drill and the impact set is really, really handy, but it's not necessary. You don't have to have it, it just makes things go quicker and a lot easier. So. Those are really handy, but they're not a vital part of the tool set. All right, if you're going to be doing any kind of electrical work, I suggest having all of these tools as well. Uh, this is an 8-foot glow-in-the-dark fish stick set, and basically you screw them together, and you can run them down the wall, and it helps you to pull wire for like new switches or outlets or anything like that. They're really handy. I definitely suggest those. Wire strippers are also really important for electrical work. You can use a pocket knife to strip the wires, but it's not as safe and it's not as fast as using wire strippers. Uh, these are wire cutters or dikes or nippers. I've heard them called all kinds of different things, but they're really important for helping you to cut your wire. It makes it a lot quicker and easier to use those. Uh, this is a voltage tester, and uh, this particular one shows if it has 120 volts, 240, 277, or 480 volts going to it. And that's pretty important. Uh, like some plugs are 220 in your house and some of them are 110. So you need to know the difference and this will help you out with that. So uh, the last one is a voltage detector. And the way this works is you turn it on and it has a green light that shows up. And you put it up next to a wire that you're about to work on. And if it has voltage going through it, it will turn red and start making a beeping noise. That's really important and that will help you to keep from getting shocked. 
So I definitely suggest all of these tools. All right, if you're going to be doing a lot of plumbing work, uh, normally I use just the general tools a lot more, but you're going to need a set of PVC cutters, which this particular kind cut up, cuts up to one inch PVC. And you're also going to be needing a reciprocating saw or a hand saw to cut the larger pipes. And that's pretty much the extent of all the specialty tools I have for plumbing because, like I said, I use mostly just the general tools for the other stuff. Alright, now for carpentry, you can really go as expensive as you'd like to go. But you can buy you a table saw and a compound miter saw. You can get you a band saw and all kinds of other really expensive tools. There's a lot of hand tools you can buy. But a lot of the basic stuff uh, you can do with just a circular saw and a jigsaw. Uh, you can also use a uh, reciprocating saw. That can come in handy as well. But these two tools you can do a whole lot of work with and they really don't cost a whole lot of money. That will get you started at least. Hey guys, uh, these are all the tools that I generally use for everything, but if you have different tools that you use a whole lot of, be sure and leave that down in the comment section below to help all the beginners that are just getting into doing things themselves. I uh, hope you enjoyed this week's project. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and consider supporting BS with AJ on Patreon so we can do bigger and better projects. I'll see you next week.